Okay, I was invited uh, to an event by Thames 21. I spoke with the CEO of Thames 21, Debbie Leach. I also spoke with John Dillon Leach, the Port of London Authority's hydrographer. And I spoke with Fleur Anderson, MP of Labour Putney. I talked about wet wipes, outlawing the use of plastic in wet wipes. Why? What is it doing to the environment? First, however, the headlines. Now, according uh, to a newspaper here, The Independence, sustainable aviation fuels will not lead to zero carbon flights. They say that SCS always have to be blended with regular old fuel, uh, fossil fuels, and they say the highest amount that can be mixed is 50%, and they say currently. And I think that's important because I read an article about Rolls-Royce testing engines running on 100% sustainable air fuel. So maybe it is just that the technology still is in development and we will get there. Now, talking about flying, newspaper also mentioning Meghan and Harry, a royal family here, finally kicked their private jet habits. They were spotted on a commercial flight which is really great, and I hope that politicians will follow. Now, more uh, from the same newspaper. They talk about UK adults, and they think that sustainable living is too expensive. They asked quite a few people, 64%, they want to be eco-friendly, but they are fearful that the increasing cost of living will make such a thing almost impossible. Okay, I thought this was quite interesting. Um, this French city, Lyon, is banning patio heaters in wintertime. Um, Lyon is doing so, and soon France, I should say. Uh, the energy consumption of one terrace equipped with five uh, heaters, and they lit normally for 14 hours a day from mid-November up to mid-March. But it uses 50,400 kilowatts of energy, emitting 13.7 ton of carbon dioxide in the process, which is not good. It's a very good initiative, I should say. In South Africa, um, we have a lot of protest. Shell is blasting the coastline of South Africa in search of oil. They're doing so, unfortunately, during whale season. And they are using underwater explosions and this to record ground vibrations, which will then in turn indicate the uh, natural resources that lay beneath. But the sound of these explosions, um, they are leaving marine life panicked and damaged and hence the protests. Okay then, River Charity Thames 21, high resolution sonar and laser scans of the riverbed of the Thames in West London have been collected along the River Thames in Hammersmith. Now, I spoke with the Port of London Authority hydrographer, John Dylan Leach. He explained to me what that means. I spoke with Fleur Anderson, the MP of Labour Putney. She would like to outlaw the use of plastic in wet wipes. She's telling me why. I spoke also with CEO of Thames 21, Debbie Leach, and she talked about the significance of it all. I'm the hydrographer, so yeah. our, our job is uh, the Thames is the biggest and the largest river in and port in the UK now. We are surveying for the, um, monitoring the, the impacts of the Tideway project, uh, a great data set. So we're using multi-beam laser, which is sonar for mm -hmm. the underwater bits. We're using laser, which is visible on top of the roofs of the vessel for those intertidal areas, the areas that are tiled, and the flood defences. Mm -hmm. And then we're also taking high resolution photography. And I have some examples that I can show you. We've got new technology in the scans that, that we've, we've got that uh, Tideway and the PLA have, have produced um, show us. It is new technology. It is new. Um, but scans have been going on of the, of the riverbed for um, a number of years. But it's only in recent years that they've noticed um, this new phenomena happening along the river, where you've got these mounds building up that weren't there previously, and they are mounds of wet wipes. And what we've done is worked with Thames 21, we're able to show them what's changing on the river. And the area of the wet wipe mound, one of seven, on the river in Hammersmith, we've been monitoring and helping them, and and we've got sort of shown that it's grown by over a metre, uh, the area is about the size of two tennis courts. Well, this is the wet wipes in the river that are building up in layers and what they're doing is attracting around them the twigs and the silt. So that, that's why you're getting these mounds that are building up and they are changing the shape of the riverbed, uh, which means that cha that's changing the water flow and it's changing the impact on wildlife habitat particularly. Um, we um, Studies have shown that 
um, in areas where there are wet wipes, there is almost no biodiversity. So I know and my constituents see the impact um, on our river and we want to clean up our river in every way. Um, and the amount of wet wipes that are just going out from the sewage into the river. Um, and so too many people don't bin their wet wipes, they flush them. You know, everyone needs to stop flushing their wet wipes. Bin it, don't flush it, never flush a wet wipe. So I've been really concerned about the amount of wet wipes that are being used. And it's understandable with COVID that more people are using wet wipes. But I was shocked to find out, I think with a lot of other people, that there's plastic in wet wipes. And so that's getting out into the marine environment and it's killing an estimated 100 million marine wildlife around the world every year. So it's having a huge impact from something that we use every day. Mm -hmm. But there are alternatives to plastic. So there are alternatives such as cellulose, bamboo, which cost the same. So Sainsbury's and Morrison's, for example, their own brand wet wipes, they've moved to being plastic free and they don't cost any more. Um, so, I mean, there was a lot of debate in, around my industry. There yeah. were a lot of workshops going on. No, um, I think it's very disappointing that rivers and oceans haven't been um, covered at COP26 more because they're absolutely essential. I think that far more should have been done for ocean. Um, and cli uh, climate change affects the ocean so much and affects our marine wildlife. It's affecting actual islands right now. And then everybody shares that data. So it's a great data set really nice for me as a hydrographer because it's one of the best data sets I think in the world monitoring and it's a huge project so it's, it's good. We want to see legislative change across the globe on yeah. this wow, okay. yeah. but hopefully we can lead the way here in the UK. We still need to use wet wipes but just make them environmentally friendly.